your life, what you do, is an outflow of your heart. So your calendar will show what's important to you. Your bank account will show what's important to you. Isn't that true? So we can't say, oh, I got it all straight in my heart, but you didn't make any change in your life. James says, faith without works is dead. If you really believe God, then it'll show by the way that you live. The Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. So I want you to notice, here's David now. David, the man after God's own heart, king, he eventually became King David for 40 years, He's saying, I'm telling you where my strength lies. I'm telling you where my confidence is. I'm telling you where my trust and my hope is. He says, when I get into a problem, I will call upon the Lord. He's worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. Now, this is why he's a man after God's own heart, because he made a decision. I'm not going to trust in my wealth. I'm not going to trust in my influence as a king. I'm not going to trust in my authority, my power. I'm not going to trust in my armies. I'm going to trust in the Lord. And this is what we have to do. We have to look at all of our assets, all that we have that we can depend on and rely on that may help us in the current or future challenges. And we have to decide, is our hope in that or is our hope in the Lord? Now, in church, when you put on your little religious hat, it's easy to just say, hey, my hope's in the Lord. But we can all do that. You know, we can all act like we, we know it all and like we've got our priorities in order. But, you know, we're not always as spiritual as we are in church. Come on now. We're not always as smart as we portray ourselves to be. This week, I, was, uh, I got this bad habit of when I walk into the offices, you know, there's a code there that you can punch in. Everybody's got their code that's on staff and stuff. So, was, I got a code there to punch in. But during office hours now, there's a receptionist that sits there, and uh, they can open the door from their desk. I always forget that. So they push that button, open the door. They see me walking up, and they push that button. They'll watch me. I'm just punching the code there, you know. <laughs> and so when I walk up, they've got this smile on their face, but it's not just a smile like, uh, hello, it's good to see you. It's a smile like, you didn't need to do that. <laughs> And they're always nice and everything. Well, that's bad enough that then I'll have to say to them, oh, I always forget. I don't have to do that, right? Well, the other day, we were, uh, we were going somewhere, and uh, uh, Pastor Ty and I were walking in the door. Well, he knew she's pressing the button, so it's a double door. He reaches over and pulls open one of the doors because she pressed the button. Well, not only... Not only did I not pay attention to her pressing the button, I didn't pay attention to him standing there with one of the doors open. I just walked right up and kept pressing in my butt. So let me just tell you, this, this is the moral of that story right there. Even the brightest of us. All right, well, may, maybe not the brightest, but listen. I don't care how smart you think you are. When life presents challenges, when you get under pressure, you start grasping for things and not realizing it, you begin to grasp for things that cannot hold you up. Right. Today I want to talk to you about this. When the money fails. When the money fails. I'm going to show you that phrase in the Bible. But I want to talk to you about our propensity to grasp for, for money to be our security and how deadly that is. 
how deceptive that is and how spiritually damning that is. David says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Notice, he's not looking to wealth and riches. My God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. I've noticed in some of the news, some of the economic news, that there are people that are predicting a crisis. There are many that are looking to different indicators and factors and such and predicting that we're on the verge or coming into some kind of a crisis. Some people have said, like right away in the fall. Other people have said it's in these uh, years coming up, months or years. You know, depending on who you're reading after and who's predicting it, they'll predict it different ways. Well, this is what we have to understand. Look, only the Lord knows exactly what's gonna happen. And if something is happening, when it's gonna happen. And only the Lord knows exactly what to do about that. How many of you know that? And everybody is in a di little different situation, and so it's not just cookie cutter, the same for everybody. And so the Lord knows these things. But nonetheless, I know that one, one prediction that I've noticed a number of people are predicting is that we're coming into a potential credit crisis. In fact, I'll put an article up on the screen. This is just one example of a credit crisis that people are predicting that there's gonna be a shortage of credit. In other words, you, you can't just go and, and use your credit card and such because all of a sudden things seize up and jam up. Now, I'm not an economist, so I don't understand everything. I, I follow along enough just to pay attention to things, but... Uh, if there was indeed, there's the article, if there was indeed a credit crisis, then you, people that are trying to function on credit uh, with loans or just, uh, you know, it, it's, it's when we're, it, it's how we move electronically. In other words, we don't have, pull out cash out of our pockets. We're, we're functioning on a credit system. Well, that's the way the world functions today, primarily. And so people are predicting this. Well, I'm not here to talk to you about all of the, the economic factors here because that's somebody else's job to do that. But I'm here to talk to you about what's more important, and that is, who is it that's going to sustain you during any crisis that could come? Is it the Lord, or is it yourself? Is it your wisdom? Is it your financial advisors? Not that I'm against financial advice, is it what you Google and what you pull up or certain blogs that you're reading after? Where is your confidence? Where is your strength? Listen to what Psalm 20, verse seven says. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. In other words, some people put their confidence in one thing and other people put their confidence in another thing, but here, the Bible says, but we have chosen not to put our confidence in horses or chariots or cash or gold or silver or whatever, stocking up food, or somebody might say, I've got guns too. Okay, you've got all that, but what are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with it? Do you really know what's gonna happen in the future and how things are gonna play out? Are you really that wise? Are you really that prepared? See, this scripture says, we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. And this is what the Lord is teaching us here. He's saying, you're acting like you don't have a God. You're acting like everybody else in this world that's just trying to look at all the data and all their information and make preparations as if you don't have relationship with the one who knows everything, the one who owns everything, the one who has all influence and all power. See, and this is a big deal because wherever you put your confidence and whomever you follow to God, that is your God. And it becomes what the Bible calls idolatry. Idolatry, in other words, we're putting our stock, we're putting our hope, we're putting our trust in something other than the God who created us, loved us, and sent Jesus to save us. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 20, uh, 6, verse 24. He said, no one can serve two masters. No one can serve two. Sometimes we think, no, I trust the Lord too. No, no, no. You can't serve two masters. 
Jesus said this. He didn't say you shouldn't. He said you cannot. You cannot. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So Jesus didn't say you shouldn't trust in both God and money. He said you cannot do it. Your real trust is going to be in one or the other. How many of you, we all got our spiritual hats on. How many of you say, I want my trust to be in the Lord? Amen. Come on. Amen. Okay. Now, see, we should say that with our spiritual hat on, but we should keep that spiritual hat on all the time, no matter what's happening. And I'm not talking about a religious, just, you know, just quacking out the right thing. I'm talking about from the heart. We really should believe that the Lord is our rock that he is our God and we serve him. So, do you believe that there are economic problems on the horizon? I'm not, I'm not trying to convince you of that. I know that the, Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have trouble. And the way that nations are moving against God, most nations, I can't see how the world is not going to have trouble just from a spiritual stand, standpoint, just from a morality standpoint. Because, here's my problem. I keep reading the Bible. I keep reading the Bible, and when people persist to defy God, they end up in problems because the Lord brings correction to them to give them an opportunity not to have whole nations go to hell. Jesus wants people to know God, doesn't he? Jesus wants people to be saved. And so, here's the question. If you do believe that there are some economic problems looming, we're talking about economics today. If you do believe those problems are looming, then how will you prepare for that? How will you prepare for that? Because preparation is something scriptural. Hi, friends. I want to take a quick moment to share what God is doing. When I was a young man, I was completely bound. But through the anointed teaching of God's Word, Jesus transformed my life. And ever since that time, I've had a passion to see other people experience this life transformation. So Jerry Dearman Ministries is committed to bring discipleship to the world. Through Operation Solid Lives, or OSL, we are literally discipling thousands of people around the world. We offer OSL on all of our Rock campuses through oslonline.com through over a hundred other churches in the U.S. and literally hundreds of churches around the world. And we send missions teams to train precious pastors overseas to disciple their congregations in places like Bulgaria, the Philippines, Uganda, and Sri Lanka. And with the generous support of viewers like you, we are now translating OSL into several other languages to help over a dozen new countries. So I want to thank you so much for helping us to make a difference in people's lives. But let me read a few verses to you. Psalm 127, verse 1. Listen to this from the Good News Bible. If the Lord does not build the house, the work of the builders is useless. If the Lord does not protect the city, it is useless for the sentries to stand guard. So you know what this tells us? Listen, if the Lord is not protecting you financially, everything else you try to do to prepare is useless. Did you hear me? If the Lord removed his hand of protection over you, then anything you try to do to protect yourself will be useless. Let me say it another way. If you're not protected by the Lord, I don't care what you do, you're not protected. Did you hear me? Yes. I want this to sink in today. See, we have to believe that there is a real God and that he sent us his word and taught us these principles. And if we are so arrogant to think, no, even if I'm out of the will of God, even if I'm not protected by the Lord, if I just do this and that and the other, then I'm going to be okay. Oh, is that right? Oh, is that right? So you can out-protect yourself. You can out-protect God of yourself. There's no way. There's no way. The Bible said, look, if the Lord is not protecting you, you are unprotected. I don't care what you do. This is so important. Listen to Mark 10.23, Jesus said this, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. How hard it is. He had told this rich young ruler, he said, follow me. He gave him an opportunity to come be a disciple. Follow me. The Bible says Jesus loved him. 
And uh, he, he said, well, what, what do I have to do? He said, here's what I want you to do with all of your wealth and money. Obey me. Do what I tell you to do. Because this is your problem. Okay, you got, you got a heart problem with depending on money and trusting in money, riches. So go sell what you have and give it to the poor and come follow me and you'll have treasure in heaven. You, you'll be all right, but come follow me. And the guy walked away sorrowful. Why? Because he was so dependent on his wealth, his nest egg, his business, his own thinking of what to do with finances, he could not obey God. He could not obey God. And Jesus turned around and said, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. In other words, what he was saying is, if this guy doesn't change this, he's not going to heaven. He's losing his eternal salvation because of his dependency on money. God forbid that anybody here would do that. God forbid that anybody listening today would do that. And if you realize that you won't obey God because you're depending on money, then you have to realize you're in this category. And you have to repent of that and say, God, that's wrong. I should not have more trust in money, riches, wealth than I do in you. And here is one of the tests to find out. Will you do what God says to do and obey him more than you just do whatever you have to do to make more money or keep more money? Will you do what the Lord says to do? Because this guy said, wouldn't do what the Lord said to do. But listen, Jesus wasn't even saying give it to him. He said, go sell it and give it to the poor. See, so this wasn't Jesus trying to get money for his ministry. This was Jesus trying to release this man from being bound by the love of money and dependency on money. How many of you know the Lord's trying to deliver our hearts? But to do that, he has to ask us to do something in faith that intentionally attacks the trust in money. If he doesn't attack that trust in money, then you can't be delivered from it. You have to confront that. You have to. But we need to do it listening to the Lord. Listen to what Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 16, or 6, verse 17. He said, command those who are rich in this present age. By the way, compared to the world standards, all Americans are rich. Oh, almost all. There are some people that are obviously are in outright poverty. But the majority, the vast majority of Americans compared to this world would be called rich. But notice what it says. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So notice it doesn't say trust in God and just live as a pauper. No, he said Transfer your trust over to God instead of in these uncertain riches, because they are uncertain. And he says, tr put it in to the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. In other words, God's not trying to tell you he's going to strip you down and you have nothing and you're suffering. He's saying God wants to help you and bless you, but he wants to do it. He doesn't want you to do it. And he doesn't want you to look to money to do that. And so... Command those who are rich. I'm commanding everybody here, including myself, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Listen to what Proverbs 23, 4, and 5 say. New Living Translation. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. In the blink of an eye, wealth disappears. I don't like that. Do you like that? Somebody said, I've worked all my life. Yeah, but in the blink of an eye, it says wealth disappears, for it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. If we put our hope in money, that can be gone that fast. And what's more deadly than the money leaving is the trust in the money that was in our hearts. See, the heart issue is the bigger issue. But you can't say you've resolved the heart issue if you haven't resolved the way you practice your life, the way that you obey or don't obey in your life. Your life, what you do, is an outflow of your heart. So your calendar will show what's important to you. Your bank account will show what's important to you. Isn't that true? So we can't say, oh, I got it all straight in my heart, but you didn't make any change in your life. James says, faith without works is dead. If you really believe God, then it'll show by the way 
that you live. Listen to Zephaniah 1.18. It says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. Somebody might say, well, that's what you got to do. You got to save up silver. You got to save up gold because if there's a collapse and the, the dollar ceases to be the world's currency reserved and all that's going to be left is gold or gold and silver and such. And listen, I'm not saying that there aren't some realities in that. And I'm not saying that that somebody shouldn't listen to the Lord if the Lord's telling them to do that. What I'm saying is, it's the Lord that's still your confidence, not even that. Not even that. You could have predicted everything properly, but if the Lord's not protecting you, you're not protected. And that'll be an embarrassment to you. That'll be to your shame. And so not even silver and gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedy riddance of all those who dwell in the land. Listen to Ezekiel 7, 19 from the God's Word translation. They will throw their silver and gold into the streets like garbage. Their silver and gold won't be able to rescue them on the day of the Lord's anger. It will no longer satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs. Their silver and gold caused them to fall into sin. Let me ask you something. Why is this in the Bible? Why is this in the Bible? This is in the Bible because people have problems with these things. Their silver and their gold caused them to sin. Their silver and their gold caused them to sin. What's the sin? The trust in riches. The trust in the silver and the gold. Caused them not to obey God. God's saying, hey, I want you to do some of this with it. Oh, no, no, I don't want it to because I, this is coming up, see, and I want, well, I, I thought I was your God. I thought I, was your, I thought I was your protection. I thought you were listening to me. I thought Jesus was your Lord. Well, he is, see, but we got this crisis that may be coming up, and so what I need to do is, see, we can say who our Lord is. We can say who our God is. We can say in whom we trust religiously, but our actions show where we really trust. Isn't that right? Tell your neighbor, say, I know this is for you today. Come on. <laughs> I really love Proverbs chapter eight. Listen to this. We, we study Proverbs chapter eight. We know the person of wisdom is the Lord Jesus, but it says in Proverbs eight twelve, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. So the person of wisdom is speaking and pick it up in verse 18. Listen to what wisdom says. Wisdom says, riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches. What does that mean? Not the riches on this earth that are corrupted or that are subject to theft. He said, enduring riches and righteousness. In other words, when you get your blessing and wealth from me, he said, you have both wealth and righteousness. Not just the love of money, which is unrighteous. He said, in verse 19, my fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth that I may fill their treasuries. Let me just tell you something. It's not that the Bible's saying, I wanna make all of you filthy rich. That's not what God's saying. That's not what God's saying. But what God is saying is, look, I really own all the wealth. I really have the influence to do whatever I want to with riches and wealth to protect people's assets, to bless them, to bless their children. There are many, many scriptures where God says that. But the Lord also, as a counterbalance, warns us that if we allow our trust to go into those things and we begin to look to the wealth to advance us, to protect us and such, now we've gone into idolatry where instead of that being a blessing from God, that is our God. That is our source. That is our protection. And the Lord is trying to warn us, not that he doesn't want us to ever be blessed, but he's trying to warn us that there are pitfalls, that there are temptations when the blessing comes from him. There are temptations to begin to look toward that blessing, to begin to depend on that blessing. Now, this message today is called, When the Money Fails. But I want you to listen to Job chapter 5, verses 19 to 22 from the contemporary English version. It says, God will protect you from harm. 
no matter how often trouble may strike. In times of war and famine, God will keep you safe. You will be sheltered without fear of hurtful words or any other weapon. You will laugh at the threat of destruction. Don't you love that? That's what God does for his children who call out to him and put their trust in him. So make sure to pay attention to what's happening in our world, but at the same time, always put your hope, faith, and prayers on the Lord. He's your rock, he's your fortress, he's your God, and in him you can safely trust. And you know, here at Jerry Dearman Ministries, we're committed to building solid lives on the Word of God and with the Word of God. So when you sow into this ministry, you're joining hands with us to reach people literally around the world. And as a special thank you, I'm excited to be able to send you some teachings on the presence of God. For a gift of any amount, we have a special three CD miniseries called If God is For You. And I'm telling you, it's encouraging. And it's part of a larger series called The Presence of God. And for a gift of $60 or more, we'll send the entire 13 messages on CDs. We just want to get the Word of God into your heart. And when the presence of God is with you, nothing and no one will be able to stop you. Well, I want to thank you so much for your prayers and your partnership. And don't forget to set your DVRs so you don't miss any of these teachings. And never, ever forget that our God is always faithful. We'll see you next time. Life can be filled with many challenges, both small and large. And while everyone's challenge is different, it's important for you to know that when you choose to seek and live in God's presence, nothing can stand against you. With God's presence in your life, you can live with the confidence of knowing that God will even turn your problems and challenges into positive outcomes. If you'll stand with us today by giving a gift of any amount to help us take God's word around the world and build solid lives, Pastor Jerry would like to send you this special gift of appreciation, a three CD miniseries titled, If God is For You. This three CD miniseries is yours for a gift of any amount today. The three CD miniseries is part of a larger 13 message series titled, The Presence of God. For a special gift of $60 or more, Pastor Jerry will send you the complete 13 message series entitled, The Presence of God on CD. Whatever you can do, know that your generous giving will result in lives that are changed for eternity. Don't wait. Call 1-800-544-8000 or visit jerrydearman.com today and help us take the Word of God around the world. Solid Life with Jerry Dearman is made possible by the generous gifts of those who have joined hands with us to take the message of Jesus Christ around the world. Jerry Dearman Ministries is building solid lives around the globe through the life-transforming power of the Word of God by discipling people in every nation. For more information about Jerry Dearman Ministries or one of The Rock's many campuses around the country, please go to jerrydearman.com. Write to us at P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California 92803 or call us at 1-800-544-8000.